Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back for another weekly wrap up. I'm going into my reading wrap up. I finished three things this week. The first I finished, The Stars Within by Lena Allison Knight, and I'm not sure if the review for this will come out before this video or if it will come out after, but there, there's a more pro and con uh, review coming for this. Overall, I really liked it. I did have an issue with the whole people being owned at the beginning of this book. Just not my really, it's not really a concept that I like in science fiction where like, oh, because you have these powers, now you're owned, or because you're this race or you're the, like this skill, you, you are owned. I'm, I'm done with my science fiction having populations that are owned by corporations or other populations. I'm just not interested. And so it took me a little bit to get over the plot parts that were dealing with that. And then once, you know, Carell had decided that, all right, yes, I want to escape and go free my love. I was all on board. We were back to space opera that I enjoy. So overall, I really enjoyed it and I do want to read the rest of the series. And then I finished Anna Natural Life by Erin Wagner, which is my buzzword-a-thon read for January. Um, life or Death had to be in the title. And this was something completely different for me for uh, science fiction. In this world, robots have gained sentience. Not all robots, but some, and those who do are considered robot nishi or robot nicks is what they're called. And this robot, 812-3, has been imprisoned due to murdering a human. The main character, Aya, is a lawyer from Earth who has immigrated to Europa, and part of her job is to do re uh, rehabilitation. And so she's sent to offer him a re rehabilitation program, and he asks her to appeal his murder conviction instead. And she herself does not like robot Nishi and has her own prejudices, and she has to work past that to what is the most important thing, and then dealing with other people who also have those same prejudices. Very, very interesting. Now, while this cover is gorgeous, the robot Nishi do not actually look like this. They actually look more human. They just don't have the same facial um, movements, reactions like humans do. Really, really enjoyed this, and I hope I'm sad that I hadn't heard of it sooner because this is one that I would have nominated for an award. I guess it, I would have nominated it. It came out in 2020, so I guess I would have nominated it for 2021. But yeah, this was really good. Very thought provoking. Makes you definitely look at your priorities and your prejudices. And then I read the second volume of Delicious in the Dungeon, where our adventuring party continues their trek on through the floors eating monsters as they go to save their friend from the dragon, who's in the belly of a dragon. And it's just a lot of fun. It's a great romp. So to what I am currently reading. I am currently reading Crucible of Hell, the story of the Battle of Okinawa, and it this author does a really great job of looking at the perspective of everyone. So. We've seen some of the American perspective, we've seen some of the British perspective, and we've seen the Japanese perspective leading up to the battle. And I like that it is short chapters, so it's easy to keep reading. I have then started Space Craze by Margaret Whitecap. Pretty sure I butchered that last name. And this is talking about how spaceflight has captured the imagination of people, real, real spaceflight, 
like with NASA and imagined as in science fiction. And she's talking a lot about memorabilia. The author is a museum curator at the Smithsonian Space and Air Museum. And she she's looking at it from looking at the memorabilia. So I'm still on the chapter that's talking about ray guns and Buck Rogers. Side note with the Buck Rogers as it's talking about a person named Dill, and then I read the Dungeons and Dragon books, which then the Dill family ends up getting the Buck Rogers copyright or owning Buck Rogers. And I was like, oh, that's funny that those two kind of connect and I see how they got Buck Rogers <laughs> as a property. And the other book kind of showed what they've been trying to do with it. Random uh, side note, but it was kind of fun. And she is also weaving in some well-known science fiction stories and then how they've affected populations, like the how the journey to the moon, the movie, and the, you know, the story by Jules Verne have like influenced rides and I guess the, for a while there was a lunar parks, uh, people, there were actual parks based off of space adventures. I didn't know any of that. And so it's kind of cool getting this history alongside learning how the science fiction and memorabilia and movies really do influence a lot of the actual science. Um, talked about how Dr. Goddard had a copy of the Jules Verne book, Journey to the Moon. I think that's the name. If it's not, I'm going to correct myself, or I'll try to remember to correct myself down below. But he had notes of how the science was wrong, but that helped then it helped him become interested in being a rocket scientist. It's not a new thing. I've even, I've even listened to some podcasts from the Houston. We have a podcast series where it talks about how science fiction has inspired our current scientists today, it helped them decide to get into science. So science fiction really does influence actual science and it's space flight that we currently have going on and breakthroughs in science and space flight then inspire science fiction writers as they write more works. So I'm enjoying this and how it's, it's like, it's a cycle, it's a loop and it's important. The last thing I am actually listening to on audiobook because I wasn't able to get a physical copy is Hidden Figures. And then well, when I went to go get the audiobook, I was like, oh, they have a children's version of this. So I'm planning to read that. So I'm planning to read this this week because I asked to be a guest on the Vixen of Fit Fiction's channel, scripting the book, which is Hidden Figures this month. And that is on the 19th, which is a Sunday, I believe Eastern, it's noon because it's 11 a.m. Central, which is my time. So I also plan to read this this week as I continue listening to the audiobook of the full version. I've already watched the movie twice. <laughs> I'm very excited. Um, I also hope to this week read the read volumes three and four. And then I think that I'm going to try The Daughters of Izdahar by Hadir Elsby. Elsby? Um, this is a fantasy where, with magic, I need a little bit of a break from the science fiction before I jump full into the semifinalists that I need to read. Everything's up in the air. <laughs> Moving on to my writing wrap-up, I did write this week. It helps that I was a little bit late on editing my last wrap up where then I was like, I am going to write. I was like, oh yeah, I still need to do that. So I did write and I really enjoyed it. I actually took Friday off last week and just for a mental health day, those are important to take. And I am very much blessed and privileged that my current job allows me to do mental health days, especially because this time of year can be pretty rough for me. And so I got to watch several, like jump onto several people's sprint streams and just write and 
It's been a while since I've been in my exalted story, so I was getting back into it. I'm at the part where Theo has to decide whether or not he wants to be back in the public eye and what that is going to mean because he's a deposed king and he's been in hiding for months as he's been recovering from a head injury. That's kind of where I am and it, it's fun. It's fun to get back into it, especially because one of the characters he interacts a lot with is a through character and I think almost every, all the major point of view characters' stories, so we get to see her in different ways. And I, I like writing her. I think she might be my favorite side character. <laughs> um, or, I don't know, she might end up being my favorite character who just never gets a point of view. But I look forward to continuing writing the story and working on finishing Thea's perspective. <laughs> Then for other media, we are continuing to watch the second season of Vox Machina. It, it's just such a fun series. If you haven't watched it yet, go, go watch it. Um, I'm continuing to watch Warehouse 13. I am finally on the last season, and I, I kind of see why I dropped off in the season before. But I'm like, you know what, I'm on, there's only five seasons of this show, so it had its full arc. I'm just, I'm going to finish it, and... We will, we will see where things go from there, or we'll see how things end. After I finish it, I will talk more about different things that I've noticed, but I, I want the full arc of the story before I talk about it. And then I have watched Hidden Figures twice in this past week. Again, preparing for scripting the book. And I will leave a link for scripting the book down below because I'm very excited to be doing that. As a writer and you know someone who likes movies I think it's a great show that they put on and they do different types of books and in different types of media so I have a lot of fun with that I I always enjoy it I don't always I don't think I've ever caught it live before but I always make sure I go watch it For things coming up. I have filmed all my book reviews for my quarter finalists. They will be coming out. And then, like I said, I am planning to be a guest on Nia the Vixen's channel for scripting the book with Ben Pick and Natalie Locke. Both also great cha channels that I enjoy. And I'll leave all three down below too. I, I still need to film my favorite January read, do a book review on that. And then talk about the semifinalists that my group Book Invasion has been assigned. I have many videos still in the works that I need to film and get edited and uploaded. I have lots of ideas. How is your guys' February going? Do you guys feel like this month is short and you don't always get everything done that you want? Or you're like, yes, it's a quick month, so winter's almost done. I'd love to know. Thank you and have a great day.